Hi everyone, it's June here from the No Bull Channel. Happy August everybody and wherever you are around the world, I hope you're having a fabulous day. And I want to wish a super warm welcome to all my new subscribers. I see you, thank you for coming on board. And for those of you who have been with me, thank you so much for staying with me through all these months, years. I mean, the struggle is real, the struggle is real. Thank you so much, guys. Um, we're here to talk about books, so let's get rolling. Now, August is a very special month. It is the month of three national days in this region, the national days of Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Now, these uh, three countries are not just close to me geographically, but they're also very close to my heart. I have friends and or families in these countries, and they all mean so much to me. As Singapore's National Day is coming up really soon, I figured I'd start with this book, um, It Never Rains on National Day by Jeremy Tiang. This is a collection of 10, 11 stories um, of how Singaporeans and the Singapore related uh, from various parts of the world um, mark, observe, cope, deal, manage and celebrate National Day. Now for those of you residing in Singapore, um, you guys know that the National Day Parade and the National Day Song, um, that those two things are always the highlight every year. But for me, I think the part that I like the most is of course the fly past. But then again, I just love fly past. I don't, it doesn't matter whether it's for Bastille Day in France or for the Queen's birthday in UK. That's just me. Back to the book. Now, I read this some time ago and didn't think much of it. Don't come for me. I'm not throwing shade at Mr. Tiang. I do not know him personally. I'm sure he's a wonderful person. Uh, I'm talking strictly, uh, strictly about the book. But then again, you know, I read this for the second time in preparation for this episode. Ooh, this time around, it got me. These stories got me good. But I also think it's because of um, a couple of things that I've been experiencing, actually not a couple of things, a lot of things that I've been experiencing over the last few months. Um, so right now, you know what? I can relate. I can relate. Um, I want to highlight a couple of stories from this book. So here we go. In Trondheim, two scholars. Now, um, in Singapore, scholars are like usually the brightest of the lot. Um, there are students who are given scholarship to pursue their studies, um, often overseas, um, but these um, scholarships, um, they come with a bond. So upon graduation, these students will um, have to work for a number of years in a, in a specified organization. That's just a rough description or what I know of how the scholarship system works. Now, if you want to find out more, please do your own research. I'm clearly not a scholar, so I'm just telling you roughly what I know. Um, that's my disclaimer right there. In Trondheim, two Singaporeans met on a train. They couldn't be more different at first glance. She a teacher and he an engineer. Now he thought she um, had a look of someone um, who read a lot of storybooks. And uh, she knew he was an engineer simply because of his glasses, his check shirt, and plus he had two ballpoint pens in his shirt pocket. Uh, I'm not big on stereotype, but I did laugh when I read that. And I was wondering if I have the look of someone who read a lot of storybooks and if engineers do have a thing for check shirt. But in any case, um, she, she came from a privileged background and had lived a pretty charmed life. Uh, while he, well, worked his way through and up to where he is today, um, yet she's the one who is unhappy and is running away. Her bitterness, resentment, and I guess some degree of rage rattled him. Um, he who had always, you know, stuck to the well-trodden path of hard work, scholarship, diving straight into work. 
it's diving straight into the workforce and more hard work. Um, I, I, I guess he just couldn't understand her discontentment. Um, she had everything going for her and yet she wanted out. Um, he knows of this kind, as I do. Now the second story that I enjoyed and want to highlight is Harmonious Residences. Singapore, like most expanding cities around the world, relies significantly on a migrant workforce. Now the story begins with the gruesome discovery of a decapitated body on the 41st floor. Now what follows is a look at how the stakeholders um, react, respond and reflect. We watch how they struggle with what they have to do, what they ought to have done, and what's needed to stay out of trouble. Um, there is a line in this book where a police officer um, was, you know, was talking about um, for a foreigner and she referred to foreigners as these people. Now, this disturbed me greatly, but then again, you know, I guess that is what all good stories do. They you know, they stir emotions, uh, it, you know, they get you thinking. So I think, um, you know, mainly because, you know, I have been classed these people uh, on some occasions. You know, when people make sweeping statements about race and nationality, you know what I'm talking about. So guys, I know you have a heart in there somewhere. Be kind and be mindful when you meet people, huh? The last story that I want to highlight and uh, mention in this episode is also the last story in this book, Saving the Best for Last, okay? When I read this story book, the, sorry, when I read this book the first time around, this was the story that I, I really loved the most. And I still do, I think this is, this is my favorite story in the entire collection, um, Sophia's Party. Well, Sophia is throwing a National Day party. She embodies a certain version of the great success story from The Little Red Dot. She's beautiful. She's married to a Brit, Nicholas. Um, they have a uh, wonderful home and, uh, and by all accounts, they are wealthy. All boxes checked uh, to ensure a fab and wonderful life here in Singapore. Or does it? Okay, what's great about this story is that it's not just about Sophia and Nicholas. Um, we also get to look at all the other guests um, uh, at the party. Um, it gives you an insight to the psyche of the people around here. Um, if you live in Singapore long enough, or maybe if you've just lived in Singapore, you would have met some of these people. I know I have. Jeremy Tiang's It Never Rains on National Day has captured a side of Singapore that is beyond the prim and proper and close to perfection. Jeremy Tiang is keeping it real and I like it very, very, very much, especially the second time around. So we're going to rain on your parade and tell you that life is not always rainbows and unicorns. That's why we read, to escape. Like it says here, Jeremy Tiang's debut collection weaves together the lives of its characters across the world from Switzerland, Norway, Germany, China, Canada, Thailand, New York City and back to Singapore. These unsettling stories ask how we decide where we belong and what happens to those who don't. I'm giving away my copy of It Never Rains on National Day by Jeremy Tiang. I'll be upfront, this is not brand new, I have read it clearly, but it's in great condition and I am the first owner. Um, this is definitely a very good read, um, it sets you thinking. So if you want to have a go at it, um, just leave a message, It Never Rains in the comment uh, section below. Um, uh, terms and condition apply. Um, my decision will be final. I'm sure you guys understand. Um, that's a long weekend coming up in Singapore, so I wish you guys a fantastic week ahead. 
enjoy yourselves and until I see you again remember to be kind, be better, noble. Bye! Ooh, a bit of shade there.